Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another free playbook for you guys today, a full ebook breakdown, uh, whatever you want to call it, of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, this playbook uh, is essentially pretty much the same as the Arizona Cardinals playbook was a couple years ago uh, because the coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was the coach of the Cardinals way back when. And that particular playbook was really popular. Back in the day, the Cardinals was definitely a top five playbook pretty much every year. So this is essentially a lot of plays from that transferred over into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playbook but to me this is without a doubt one of the best passing playbooks in the game uh no doubt in my mind this is one of the most explosive passing playbooks the gun type formation in this particular playbook is one of the deepest and one of the best in the entire game of madden so i wanted to bring this to you guys because to me like i said this is a top five top ten playbook easily uh and i wanted to uh, give that to you guys for free if you guys want to see more playbooks like this every month you know let me know in the comment section which one you prefer me to do, put out next other than that let's go ahead and let's get right into the video Next up, we got the Pistol Bunch TE. We have the HP Zone, Halfback Zone. So we're just going to flip this play. Nothing else will change. And a lot of times we have a really nice inside run. This is a really popular run from a couple years now. Definitely not my favorite route or my favorite uh, run out of this formation. Uh, but you can see it's very successful as I get 15 yards right through the teeth of the defense. I mean, they had that line stacked, and it still got through. So, you know, without a doubt, this is, uh, to me, you, you can really get some big runs behind receivers. I don't understand why, but that's just how the game is. So go ahead, I'm going to do it one more time. And we're just going to pick our way through, get about five, six yards. Just probably shouldn't have got anything. My patience is what really what really worked that out. Uh, but like I said, I mean, this this you get some tight defenses like this, and you can still get plays out of it. So next up, we have the cross drag. So here we go. We got a guy blitzing. That's all right. You know, like I said, we're, we're just basically working our way back from the short routes to the deep routes. That's essentially how this play works. If the short routes are there, take them. If not, you just keep working your way back until you get to the deep routes. Uh, the man coverage is a lot tighter than it has been in years past, so it, it, especially on crossing routes. So a lot of times, that'll take those plays away now. Uh, but, you know, against zones, it's still the same concept. And the drags, if it is a man, the drags still, still, they still work. <laughs> so that's all we really need to know. So just a bunch of crossing routes. And mess up man cover or mess up zone coverage. Uh, if it's a if it's a man coverage, you just gotta hit those enemy routes, those drags. Typically, hit the drag with your fastest Ready. receiver. Would be the best idea. Next up, we got the PA curls. This play is pretty specific to cover to cover one man or cover two man, and it's really just gearing at this uh, this tight end route. Um, on the other side, I mean, you can work the other side with zones. But it's pretty easy. If you have a man, it's going to be A. If you have a zone, uh, you can really work it to the other side. As you can see, this route really just destroys um, destroys man coverage. And then if it is a zone, I mean, you're just working your way back. The B route um, will come open under it a lot of times. You can get a catch and run, uh, you know, whether it's cover two, cover three. Anything with hard flats, really. Ready? White to three. Definitely cancel the play action if you're looking to work the zone side because it'll mess up your timing for the quick throws. And then, you know, without a doubt, like I said, I mean, the, the, you got that. I mean, that's a good route going across the middle there. The other two routes are a little bit trickier to uh, to, decide, to decipher what's really the play. Um, you know, a lot of times this guy will sit in the middle and just get, get sat on. You can see right there. I wouldn't recommend throwing it to that route nine times out of ten. But there will be times where he gets left uncovered. And in those scenarios, then you'd have to hit him. Next up, we got the spot option. This play right here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put X on a streak. That's all I really need to do anyway. I mean, I can, you know, I'm going to split the field in half here with the bunch. That's essentially my, my call. Um, and I'm going to work the, the, the short route back. If the short route's there, I'm going to take it, catch and run, no questions asked. If they try to take away that short route, a lot of times it'll lead to the uh, the, the route behind it being open. Like right there, they took it away. Okay, fine, I'll go over the top. It's a real simple read, high or low. That's all there really is. Now, as far as man coverage goes, uh, the Y route obviously is going to beat his man coverage. None of the other routes really are going to beat their man coverage. 
Next up, we got the verticals. The only adjustment I would say make is put Olsen on a drag, motion out more, and that's pretty much the play. I mean, he has that same effect. That's a, that's a, you know, that, that, uh, that route I've been using quite a bit. It's going to be very good under cover threes. If it's cover two, you're going to see this effect uh, where you get a really big play. Accuracy is a little bit of an issue. Like I said, I threw it too quickly there. If I'm going to run this play, I probably want to run it from as far to the left of the line of scrimmage as possible. So go ahead and we're going to do that again. It looks like it's going to be a man. If it is, I'm just going to hold it until he turns upfield. And we're going to get a big play. If it was a, a little bit faster, maybe he'd be gone. Like I said, might have a man again. Let's take a look here. Oh, we got that cover too, which is like I said, it's, you know, that's why you're dragging that that tight end route. It's going to be just as big of a play, if not more, as as a, as a cover one man. So here we go. Looks like they might have somebody coming in. I'm going to go ahead and block my running back, just in case. And it didn't work anyway. They got they got right through, but it was, and I would have had a touchdown if I could have blocked it. Or if my go, go. running back could have blocked it, I should say. He's the one who let me down, not me. I didn't do anything. So here we go once again. We're just going to get outside. Like I said, I'll steal that all game. You know what I'm saying? The linebacker won't go that far, but my receiver will. My quarterback will. So here we go. Looks like he's coming down. We've probably got a man coverage. Or a cover two. That works too. Got hit, but I made the play anyway. Through the contact. Through the hit. Next up, we got the halfback counter. To me, the counter plays are some of the best run plays in the game. They're not necessarily uh, universal as far as formation goes, but this one's a good one. This is in the category of good, of good, not great. Uh, but you can see, I mean, I'm basically, it's always the same principles. Uh, I'm just going to, um, you know, wait to see what that defensive end does, and that basically dictates where I run. But I'm getting a guaranteed 10 yards pretty much every time. Here they're just coming with an all-up blitz. I can't imagine that's going to work out too good for me. But, you know, real simple. Read that end. He, he got he, he hesitated so I'm gonna take it outside second he gets hit get an easy 10 yards if he crashes outside if he's more aggressive then I gotta take it inside um, but you know you see right there I mean he gets stuffed at the point of attack a lot of times which didn't help me there but it is helpful overall in the run and it actually can work as a deterrent I actually think it's better when he's not getting stuffed at the line but that's just me first up we got the zone alert Z smoke it's just a simple zone play. Um, I find it's pretty effective. I mean, you see, you know, the, the, the lane that I had there. Um, the defense is going to play it soft because they'll most likely be reacting to the possibility of a pass. This is a full-out blitz right here. That was a full-out blitz right there. Nothing I can really do about that. But typically, um, you know, it looks like an inside zone, but you really have the option to bounce it outside. Um, obviously, a cornerback. But I'm getting some exotic blitzes that are messing it up. You flip it to either side. Uh, I'm sorry, actually, you can't flip either side. I forgot. It's a smoke play. <laughs> so you don't have that ability. But like I said, you have a couple different options, a couple different areas you can run on pretty much every down, um, just as long as like the blocking gets off like it did right there. Uh, you can see, you know, that's just a really huge lane. Uh, really good run play. Next up, we got the jet sweep. So obviously, mirrors the motion of the passing play. They're meant to work together. Uh, all you really want to do, though, is you want to typically burn this to the outside. I don't think, uh, I mean, there's a lane inside, but I don't think you're necessarily going to get a ton doing that. This is a unique play. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a, a money play, but um, it's something, you know. If you have a, a fast receiver like Tyreek Hill, throw in this little bit of trickery, and you can have a nice play here and there. So that's a good play, but go ahead and move on. Next up, we got the PA Jet Sweep. So this is an interesting play. I mean, you're going to have that X route um, under the coverages a lot of times. It's just a nice, it's almost like a, a bubble screen with no blocking. <laughs> so it's an interesting play. It's a really good setup. I can't make any other adjustments, uh, which sucks, but that's just how it is. <laughs> they don't, you know, they don't let you make adjustments on screen plays anymore. But this is the guy anyway. I mean, that's who I want to, uh, I want to hit. He just gets forgotten a lot of times. I don't think any of the other routes are really too consistent necessarily, but like I said, this is really the bread and butter of it anyway. Like I said, I mean, we got the B route here. I don't know if that was a cover two. You can see how all these stretching routes pull the cover twos apart. So I would say this is definitely B. That's your cover two read. Uh, other than that, your cover three, cover four. You're going to be hitting this guy underneath cover one. As you can see, the, the man cover guy was coming over late. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be an option uh, for pretty much every coverage other than cover two. So here's cover three. Like I said, I already know, you know, the X route's going to be open. 
just hit it to him in stride and just, just burn it. Just hit the burners up the field. I don't even have my fastest running back or my fastest receiver running that. If I did, it'd probably be even more yards. Uh, but a really interesting play, a really cheesy play. Next up, we got the PA misdirection shot. This is a cover four beater. Really easy play. All you're going to do is, um, you know, wait for the uh, the B receiver to get past the uh, the safety. And then it's really it's all about the throw at that point. I didn't make a very good throw right there. I'm also too far back from the line. You typically want to be closer to the line, um, as you can see. I mean, it's, it's just a really, it's a long play. <laughs> like there, I had to throw it short because I was getting too close to the line. So it's like, it's all about timing and rhythm. I mean, there's more to it than just the play um, like I said right here I mean I thought I thought maybe that lineman <laughs> would help me out but he didn't but it's <laughs> either way like I said you can see it gets passed that was a really unorthodox type of throw uh, but that's essentially what it's going to be let's do it one time let's try to get it a little bit cleaner than this <clears throat> let's see right there that was clean you know what I'm saying <laughs> So let's watch the instant replay. Like I said, I mean, obviously, like I said, you got to be closer to the line because the ball's traveling like 60 yards. I actually got way too close to this lineman for comfort, but it still let me get it away. And like I said, as far as the receiver's concerned, you just have to wait till he really gets past that safety there because you're throwing it away. You're past leading it away from the trailing safety. So you definitely got plenty of space and time. But if I really have my choice, I want to pass lead it over here so I can just run to open space. Next up, we got the close PA sale. This play here, I mean, if you put, you can put uh, this guy here on a streak. Um, I'd say put uh, X on an out route, then smart route, and the pass block the running back. I think that's going to be the best way to run this. You have an outlet pass, which is the RB. Uh, so if it's a man coverage, you got an easy play to that guy, which obviously that was. But that's the only issue really is getting time. That's why if you want to, you can just put the RB route. Um, you can pass block also, and you can put the RB route on the streak instead. And, you know, you'll get the, the same effect um, just as long as this is uh, cover three, which it looks like it is. There we go. So we're going to bomb this up. So like I said, this play is capable of a couple different things. It's capable of cover three bomb. It's a good cover one man play uh, with your, your outside route, which is Thomas. And it's also, you know, it's a good cover two play. Um, so there's a couple different things you can do with this play. But overall, the probably the biggest property is going to be the, uh, the, the, the one play touchdown, which hopefully this isn't a man coverage and I'll get that look again. Which I did, but I got sacked. But like I said, you can see it's there. So that's the biggest issue is getting that time so you can bomb that up. But that's what every pass play is going to be that way. Next up, we got the close PA cross. This is a natural cover cover four beater. So all I want to do is pass back my running back. I have some good routes crossing the field. Uh, but I'm really just waiting for that X route to clear so I can just throw it up over the, over the safety there. Um, really simple. I mean, all you're really doing is uh, I'll go to the replay, I guess. All you're really doing here is waiting for this guy to get inside of this guy. And then he's just, you know, that, that safety there can't catch up. None of them can. So I'm just going to pass lead away, throw it, run it, and catch it. You know what I'm saying? Pass lead it to the outside away from this, this safety. And that's all I really got to worry about. Next up, we got the counter U. Gonna do a little motion here, no real adjustment to be made because of that motion, and then I'm just gonna run it like a normal counter play. Uh, man, I really took that inside too much, but still got a couple yards. But like I said, it's definitely capable of more. Um, this here is gonna match the motion of the passing play, uh, although I think the counter run play is gonna be a little bit more effective than the uh, the passing play. Um, ultimately, <laughs> as you can see, I get a nice big run right there. Uh, but yeah, you're really just, I mean, here, well, this is going to be interesting considering we got that safety coming off the backside. But either way, <laughs> I still got out of it. Like I said, the blocking is just insane. And I'm still going. I think I just juked three people. <laughs> I kind of watch a replay on that. Did I really just juke three people? Next up, we got the PA boot slide. This play... <laughs> This play right here, I mean, you don't have to make any adjustments. It's pretty good just like this. Uh, the, the underneath route, I mean, the A route is probably going to be the most money route other than the comeback route. Um, and then the RB route's really going to be good under coverages, like a lot of cover threes and whatnot. Um, he's going to get open. Uh, but, you know, you really have uh, just about everything here is going to work except for the B route. The B route's just going to uh, pull coverage for the most part. Um, and then, like I said, the comeback. Oof. 
Comeback's gonna be your best option against man. Um, as you can see right here, I mean, it looks like a man. Comeback route, like I said, that's your bailing out route pretty much every time. Whether it's man or zone. Um, and then your A route, I mean, your A route's gonna be the most consistent, especially against, you know, user coverage, because there's so many different routes going on. Um, your opponent's gonna, you know, they, they might just disregard that one. Um, I would say, you know, if you put B on an in route, it'll give him a little bit more purpose other than, um, you know, other than what he's doing. As we get a man coverage once again. <laughs> so the RB route used to be a really glitchy play. There we go. We finally get him open. <laughs> like I said, he'll get forgotten a lot of times, uh, especially in like cover threes. So don't forget about him underneath on a nice catch and run play. Next up, we got the PA Scissors Flood. That route, um, the Y route, I'm going to block the running back because obviously those guys, are, those safeties are coming. But that Y route is going to be a really good man-beater route. Um, I had to throw it early because, like I said, the, the, the heat was coming. But against man and zone, that's going to be a good look. Um, the running back is just going to kind of pull coverage down. But like I said, I'm just waiting for him to get outside pretty much every time, whether it's cover two, cover three, man. Uh, Thomas's route is really good this year because man's really tight. And uh, that can really shake it off. Let's go. Let's do that just a couple of times. Like I said, this is my route. I got a, a, a blitz right there, so I don't have to wait as long as I would have. None of these other routes are really that great, unless it's like a cover three. They can throw it to the running back. But other than that, like I said, I'm just waiting, waiting on this guy to break. But you're really just playing the running back to the to the Y routes. It's one of the two every time. Like I said, they drop back too far, just hit the McCaffrey, and uh, let your playmaker make some plays. Let him shake and bake. Let him turn up the field. You usually get more than that. Next up, we got the zone alert bubble. So this formation will give away whether it's man or zone. Uh, and if it's a zone, I typically I'll watch that defender in front of B. If he drops back like he did there, um, or, you know, if, I mean, that was a cover too, so that's actually one of the zones you probably wouldn't want to run it against, although I still got some positive yards. But essentially, I'm just watching that guy right there. And uh, if he drops back, he's typically going to get blocked. So like I said, my first read is man or zone. My second read is what that defender does. Here it's going to be that zone. You can see he gets inside, gets sucked in. Then I got a good play outside. And uh, if I make a guy miss or two, I could really be gone. And then if it's a man coverage, I'm going to go ahead to that RB route. Holding this ball before throwing it to the bubble screen, the longer you hold it, the better the play is going to be as far as the reaction to that linebacker. Next up, we got the halfback counter. Another counter play. I mean, you know, like I said, to me, some of the best run plays in the game are counter plays. This one out of the bunch is no different. One more time. One more time. There we go. Get a nice inside run. Sometimes that's where it's going to be. Here we go. We're going to get outside. Like I said, that if they if they the defensive ends over aggressive, shoots outside. You go inside. You get a nice play. If he hesitates, right here, I'm going to take it outside. It's real simple. Real simple concept. These counter plays can be found everywhere, and they all are pretty much run the same. <clears throat> Next up out of the single back dice slot, we have the halfback toss crack. I mean, he's just going to, you know, this receiver is going to come in, seal that edge, and then a lot of times, I mean, you just have daylight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is just real easy. And, I, and I'm going against a 3-4, so I actually made the formation a little bit heavier than normal. But you can see the potential. So it's going to do this a couple times. Like I said, he just he just really, I mean, that receiver really clears up that linebacker. And uh, it's just like nothing but space. And like I said, I, I have they have a bigger formation than I do, so it shouldn't be that way. But uh, nothing really to this play, just 
you know, hike the ball and you're basically sprinting outside. Like right there, I mean, that guy spun off that first one and made it a little bit of an issue for the next for the next blocker. But the way this hole can set up can be pretty amazing. Um, you know, it's typically inside. It's typically not to the outside like you would typically think a toss play would be. But it's typically right in this gap, and that's not going to happen here because that, that safety is going to probably mess the whole thing up. But he didn't. Look at that. It picked it up without without a flaw. It said, very impressive. Very impressive play. Here we go. One time, cover three. Like I said, he'll turn that dude back, and I'm just like I'm just I'm just sprinting in the field of flowers, man. Like there's nothing around me at all. Really good play. Next up, out of the single back wing pair, we have the PA counter shot. This over here, I mean, I have really good routes to the uh, the A and the B route um, crossing. You know, what I mean, they'll get open quite a bit against a lot of things. But this ultimately is a, a one play touchdown against cover four. Which is how I want to use it. So I'm just going to pass block the B route so he doesn't pull coverage back. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of, you know, I have plenty of blocking. And I'm just going to wait till this guy crosses. And uh, you can see how it's an easy one play TD. But against like regular cover three and cover four and stuff like that, I can run it just like this. And it's going to be uh, pretty successful because of the A and the, uh, the X route crossing are really good plays, are really good routes. So, like I said, I'll just motion this guy in here. You know, if it's a normal cover three or something like that, and it's a really good play. Like I said, the A route typically is going to be one of my better reads. But this is mostly about hitting home run anyway. So, Next up out of the wing stack, we have the Bucks smash. So all I'm going to do is streak the X route, and that's going to get the B route open against most coverages. Uh, man or zone, the, the drag underneath is going to help against cover two, pull cover two uh, corners down. Um, but that's pretty much the play. You got pretty good check downs over the middle, but typically you won't need them. Um, but it's really timing. I have to make better timing on my throws. So like I said, right here, we're just going to go ahead. We're going to wait for him to break. Like I said, he's going to get outside of just about every zone. And yeah, man, block the running back just to give yourself a little extra protection to wait for this uh, this B route to get outside. It's pretty much uh, you know the best look I could say. Next up, we have the halfback zone week. I find this formation does a really good job of blocking, as you can see right there. I mean, I'm just getting, like, a huge lane. You know what I mean? I shouldn't be getting a lane that big. The receivers really create a lot of space inside because of their position. Uh, like right here. You can see how far out that linebacker is. I actually want that linebacker in closer, though, so he can get blocked by an actual blocker. So sometimes that'll get that. Sometimes it won't. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, this is just, to me, uh, a really good inside play to run off of uh, that other play. So you can get really consistent blocking. It's like right there. That receiver shouldn't block that good, but you can see how that receiver just really manhandles that outside linebacker. So definitely the most consistent run play out of this particular formation. Those receivers, like I said, they just do such a good job blocking. I don't know why. It's kind of glitchy. Next up, we got the jet sweep. This play's going to work best against man coverage because you don't have a receiver over there. Um, so there won't be a cornerback over here to to to, uh, to to help stop the run, but it's good against zone as well. But ultimately, it will work best if you're playing. If they're playing like an off man, like the, or an off zone like this, I mean, you can get a little bit more space before the tackler comes up to try to make the play. Like a cover three, it'll be well uh, well designed. But against cover two, uh, I think typically it's not going to work out too good. Um, but uh, like I said, I mean, you're just taking this to the sideline as much as you can. It's a good it's a good play. So pretty much any time you have off coverage, like I said, cover two hard flats. If they're gonna, they'll be right in the area once you come around. So that'll, that'll give you a little bit more problem than, than normal coverages. But it's a good play. Next up, we got the PA fork. I'm just gonna drag the A route. You're only gonna call a play like this if it's a man coverage because that B route gets a, does a really good job of getting outside of it. But dragging that A route will help him get open against a lot of zones, as you can see right there as well. That's just not the reason I would call this play. I would call it against man nine times out of ten just because that's really what that route does and then you have some pretty good check down options if it's zone you can go to the running back the tight end will turn to a blocker and give you a pretty good setup but you really are going all three plays and then like i said i really want to get some man coverages that's why i would hit this b route but you can see he's finding a lot of openings in zones as well but uh he's definitely the guy against man 
So here we got a man coverage. I had to pick it, but you can see if that if that cornerback turns his uh, his back to run with the receiver, he's going to get beat. So it's really simple. A lot of times it's the timing throw. A lot of times it's just you know, like I said right here, he turns his back. Pretty much game over. He does it. He did a pretty good job of catching up there. I mean, it is Desmond Trufant, but you can see one way or the other, he's going to get beat. Next up, we got the halfback toss. This play right here, I mean, I like to flip it back. If it's if it's a man coverage run, as it is, but if it's a zone coverage, I'm gonna flip it back uh, towards the uh, towards the single receiver. As you can see, I mean, the blocking was just perfect. But like I said, if there's no cornerback on that side, although typically there will be, but if the cornerback's really tight to the line of scrimmage, you can run it um, the other way. But like I said, I mean, look at this. This is just easy money, easy mode right here. So here we go, cover three safety, so I'm going to flip it. Got that cover three safety sitting on me. And then this guy's just, I should have ran it a little bit closer, so that lineman maybe could have picked it up, but I had a guy trailing me the whole way, chasing me down. So once again, cornerback down the box. We're going to flip it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, I almost, I ran over his legs, or it's I'd have been gone. Next up, we got the curl flat seam. I'm just going to drag the RB route, and that's essentially going to help me get up, up, uh, Thomas open against like cover twos and whatnot. Um, the A route is going to be a good seam play. But you can see right here, I mean, that drag is just going to help him get open against a lot of different coverages. Um, you can always uh, block the running back if you want to. I mean, he's not, I and mean, he, obviously he's, he's a good play. He's a quick read play, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Uh, but you can see how this guy just got a big opening uh, where he's going. And then the receiver, I think putting him on a true comeback route would be a better option because you don't really have a great man play on here. So obviously right here, it's a man coverage. It's going to be the comeback route more than uh, more than anything. So here we go one more time. Looks like we've got a blitz. I said that, that, um, that RB route there just pulled down pretty much any zone coverage to get this guy open. So really good play. I haven't had a chance to hit the A route yet. I don't know if that's going to come. So like I said, right there, it's a cover two. Gets between the, uh, you know, if he gets, if the if the user doesn't use him off the line, a lot of times he'll be a good look. So right here, we got that X route. Like I said that X route's a good man beater. A lot of times he'll be covered against an inferior safety or, or uh, defensive, you know, linebacker. But there, I think it was a corner, and he still got it. Let's so right here, we just splitting right up the middle there for Olsen. Gets lit up, but he still hangs on to it, so that's a good play. Next up out of the single back wing pair, we got the counter weak. This play right here, just kind of, you know, you can't set up your formation the same way uh, you typically would uh, because of the way that the alignment is. So it really gives you an advantage to the weak side. Um, so typically, you know, like I said, you'll see favorable looks uh, like this. Now, if the if the defensive end does get outside like he did right there, I have to go inside so I don't get tackled for a loss. But typically, you won't see that. So right here, like I said, he hesitates. Um, so I can just get the edge, just bounce it outside, go as fast as I can to the edge, and I get a good play. But at times, you know, a defender can get free. The hesitation look is obviously going to be the best look that I can get. Um, if that guy would have held up that block a little bit more, I would have had a touchdown. That's what I was expecting. So I'm going to do this one more time. Like I said, if he hesitates like that, it's going to be the most uh, productive way to get this run play off. Uh, and then if my blocks would hold up just a little bit more, I'd probably have a couple of touchdowns. Uh, but other than that, like I said, I'm just watching that defensive end. So like I said, right there, he crashes in. Uh, he uh, saw, you know, I get the outside. Next up, we got the stretch alert looky. This play right here, I mean, you just it's just a regular stretch play. Three tight ends blocking on the one side is going to be good for any play. You have the option if you want to pull the ball down, though, and throw it over this side here. You know what I'm saying? To keep your opponent off their toes. I mean, they're going to be overcompensating to the uh, the three tight end side anyway so it's not a bad it's not a bad play to try to hit him on the other side and definitely give him something to think about next up out of the single back bunch base we got the z spot all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put my b route on a streak i can also put this guy the, the square route on an in route or something like that doesn't really matter but basically i mean if it's if this guy's open right away i'm gonna work my way back if he's open right away i'm gonna take it for a catch and run 
put your fastest guy there possible. Um, I didn't necessarily do that, but I always recommend it. Um, and then, like I said, if he's not open, a lot of times the guy, you know, he, if he's covered down low, the guy above is going to be open. It's going to be that slant route or that outside post route. So that's pretty much your read. You're reading high and low. One of them is going to be open pretty much every time. Just take it. Don't ask no questions. You know what I'm saying? Don't force it to nothing that you don't need to be. Other than that, the B route sometimes can get open up the seam of cover two. Um, but this guy's a good cover two play outside. It's a little bit safer, the inside. The inside cover twos don't really work as well this year because the safeties kind of converge in the middle. Next up, we got the quick pitch. Uh, if you can run just like this, I mean, in the past, I've motioned out that farthest receiver. Um, oh, well, you got lit up there, man. Like you punched him in the jaw. But you can see it was a big run. Uh, but yeah, I find it's good just to run just like this. I don't necessarily um, need to make any motions. I think it's actually pretty good how, as it is. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Like I said, we're getting that now. Oh man, just gotta hold that block down, man. Just gotta hold that block down. So I'm gonna try motioning out this receiver just to see, you know, what the difference is. And you can see right there. I guess I got a little bit better, a little bit better spacing by motioning out the receiver. So we'll do that one more time. Like I said, he backs off a little bit, which is part of the reason motioning out that receiver's always been so successful for me, is it, is it backs away the cornerback, and then we get a nice, big, easy run. So we got to do that one more time. Motion him out. And then, like I said, it just helps me to get to the edge. It's not always a huge play, but you can see I got much more than I did before. So motioning him out, like I said, cornerback drops off. And it's going to make it easier for me, and I would have been gone, man. It's one dude to beat, that Deion Jones, man. Speedy middle linebacker, son of a bitch. It's like right here, he dropped down, so I know I'm probably going to have to cut this short. Actually, I don't. Yeah, no, he uh, he must have dropped off or got blocked out of the way or something. But you can see, it's a much easier run play with um, with the motion, which matches a lot, of pump, uh, a lot of pass plays that I put out anyway. <laughs> So you shouldn't have an issue there. Like I said, he just got, man, he just came. That dude, that safety, typically those safeties blow that up. That dude was coming down to blow that up, and it didn't work out for him. He got blocked twice. So one more time. Just to show some consistency here. With the new setup. Oh, man, come on, bro. That dude, he's just, he's just playing lights out. He's really disrupting some things. <laughs> I'm motioning over the wrong guy, but it don't really matter. I'm willing to bet. Let's just see. It's the same idea. Like I said, it didn't matter. Still got a big run play out of it. Still close to 10 yards. Next up out of the single back double south, we have the bench. Let's play here. I mean, if you think it's a cover two, which this obviously isn't, it's obviously a cover three. I'm going to put uh, the X route on a streak for cover threes. For cover two, I'm just going to run as is. I got sacked, but you can see it was wide open. I mean, they were obviously sending the house there. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, you know, like I said, here's another one. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get this off either. But uh, they're sending some house man coverages, and you can see obviously that beats man, uh, the uh, the B route, um, or the uh, Y route rather. So it's really up to you. I mean, like I said, this is a cover two, so I actually made the bad, I made a bad decision there, made the wrong decision. <coughs> um, here we go. Obviously, this is uh, now we got that cover three look or that man look. So that Y route's going to beat that outside. You know, I mean, you're just pre-diagnosing based off of the safeties. You know what it's gonna be so here we go cover two look now we're just gonna hit that that Y route up top you know what I mean so it's like you just you just have to know what adjustment to make based off of what coverage whether to leave it as is if, it's, if you think it's cover two or if you think it's cover three like this looks like right here just gonna put him on a streak and if it's cover three or a man it's gonna beat it outside that was actually much better coverage than, than previous plays but nine times out of ten it's gonna beat it outside Next up, we got to dig in up. So this play is really all about the uh, the stop and go. So I'm just gonna put B route on a, um, you know, I'm just gonna put him on a, uh, I forget the word, a <laughs> smart route. Uh, then I'm just gonna streak Y because I want to pull coverage back. The X route is a pretty good man beater in its own right. So you have a really good check down, uh, you know, whether it's whatever man coverage it is. Like I said, this is mostly for cover one man, but he's good against anyone. So that's an option there. And then, like I said, you're just going to put the Y route on a streak. I can block the running back as well because, like I said, all my routes are pretty much set up 
uh, and then the B route is pretty much, you know, just pass leading outside. You can see that smart route. He really gets past that corner. That's a good cornerback, too, in Desmond Trufant. Next up, we got the flanker spot. All I'm going to do is streak the X route. Uh, other than that, I mean, I can block the running back, um, you know, put the put the uh, A route on a, on a drag, and that's pretty much it. So I'll have a really good play outside. Good check down is going to be A, but the Y route, nine times out of ten, is going to get open to the outside pretty much. So that's, that's pretty much the play that I'm trying to create here is that Y route. I'm going to get him to the, uh, the sideline. And like I said, that A route really is there just to pull coverage down against like cover twos. I actually threw that ball a little bit quick as well. The longer the play goes, the, uh, the more open the Y route will get. So let's do that one more time. Like I said, I mean, I actually almost got myself sacked, so I had to throw it early again. So let's do this one more time. Let's get that Y route out. Like I said, he's getting jammed up a little bit, so I just, you know, it's, 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 it's going to be consistent, though. Against man or zone, that Y route's going to get open pretty much every time. The A route's the check down against man or zone, and it also pulls coverage uh, against cover twos. So that's pretty much, you know, everybody else here is just pulling coverage as well. Like I said, right here, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to turn that up and get a big play. Should have threw that a little bit earlier, though, because the sideline kind of messed me up. But like I said, it's all timing, uh, and it's all about that one route. Next up, we got the jet sweep. So make sure your fastest receiver is running this option. Um, although I don't have my fastest receiver doing it, I got I got Hogan doing it. But you can see it's still a successful play. If I had a faster guy, I'd probably just get a couple more yards. Uh, but no big deal. Like I said, you're just going to take the ball and sprint basically up the uh, sideline. I mean, you can get you can turn it up the field a little bit uh, prematurely. You don't always have to go outside, but you're not going to be able to turn it up before you get past the line of scrimmage. At least not with any type of athleticism anyway. And if you take a loss, it's only a couple yards. You're getting more than you're losing, so it's not really that big a deal. Um, ultimately, this, this play is going to be in the positive. As you can see right here, I mean, I'm just going to mirror my guys. Um, and, then he, and then he fumbles on top of it, but like I say, he's not athletic. This is not a very good receiver. Next up, we got the PA seam. All I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the B route. Now i got a high-low with the A and the B route. A lot of times the B route will pull the coverage down, making the A route, route wide open. The comeback route is going to be um, your, your most consistent play. Obviously, you know, your, your, the tight end, though, it, it's going to be up there as well. Uh, but, you know, you have everything you need, really. That RB route is going to pull coverage quite a bit. I said that comeback route, putting in work. Um, it's always going to be putting in work, and you know your drag is going to be another safe check down, if needed. Like I said, here's man. Anytime you got man, though, that comeback route is going to be the beater. Next up, we got the four verticals. This play here, I mean, all I'm going to do is motion this guy out. Uh, if it's a cover two, like this looks like it's a cover two. Um, I'm going to drag this uh, the receiver under, and it should give me a throwing window. Uh, good job holding on to it there, but it's going to be a tight window. Still going to be worthwhile. Here we go. Looks like we have a cover one man. Um, a lot of times the RB route will beat that up the side as well. Although maybe it's not a cover one man. It looks like it might be another cover, cover two. Um, as you can see, uh, that drag once again gets that coverage of how I want it. Cover three here most likely. Um, same setup. Only this time I'm going to just throw it a little bit prior. It's like I'm not going to wait till it gets down the field. I'm just going to throw it to him short. Like I said, this verticals play, uh, it's pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Like I said, this the way he dropped back, I can tell I'm probably going to be able to throw the ball in front of him. Sure enough, I'm right, but it was a horrible accuracy throw. You have to worry about that. Sometimes when you throw it too quickly, that happens. I'm go ahead and let's do that again. It looks like we have a cover one man this time, if I had to guess. And sure enough, we do. I'm going to go ahead and wait until he turns up the field. Like I said, you're not necessarily going to always win that because he's on a cornerback. But, you know, if you have a fast tight end, you can take that shot. Next up, we got the drive wheel. So I'm just going to put the X on a streak. And it's a very similar setup to a lot of the plays we've been doing. I'm just looking for that Y route. He's going to get open outside just about every time. He doesn't get open as fast as some other ones, though. That's the thing. Some of these other formations have a much faster opening. Uh, the A route's pretty good, too, though. You can see on the other side, like this particular play does have a better option on the opposite side. So while, you know, most of those other plays, I can just stare down the Y route. 
and I can still kind of do that here. It doesn't get open as quickly as some of the other plays, and then, like I said, the wheel route on the other side is really uh, is really good functional play. So like I said, right there, I mean, we're getting um, some really unique uh, looks, although there, you know, he caught up after the fact. So this play, like I said, it's not as good as some of the other ones, but the, the A route, uh, as you can see right there, that, that really makes up for it. So this particular uh, route combo um, actually has a little bit, you know, adds a little bit more to it. So like I said, the B route there pulls inside, and then Hogan goes right outside over the top. And it really doesn't matter, like, what the coverage is. Like, right here, there's a cover three. Hogan's just stealing on the other side. Cover two, cover four, pretty much the same thing. Doesn't beat cover one or nothing like that. Uh, any man coverages. Any man coverages are pretty much going to have to go over to the Y route. And then we have uh, some really good... We're just stealing this all game. Any zone coverage, he's pretty much going to get outside of it. And then your Y route's pretty much any zone or man. Like I already said, like I said, he just does... He's just not as fast. This particular play is really more about the A route on the other side than these other ones. You can see that the, the linebacker gets pulled in from the two routes going inside. He gets outside of him on just about any zone. Next up, we got the drive Y corner. Another play where all I'm really going to do is put the X route on a streak. Uh, the B route will come open underneath more uh, for a lot of of uh, help as far as like cover two and then like man but ultimately more is going to beat just about every coverage so it really doesn't matter this entire formation has a lot of plays like that where the, you know it's pretty much all it is uh, i would say i mean you have like some decent coverage beaters on the other side if you wanted to make this play unique especially against cover two but it's really all about this route at any point when you're calling uh, any, pretty much any one of these plays you're pretty much doing it for this play right here uh, and then I accidentally hit the wrong button. I <laughs> accidentally hit the right bumper when I was trying to hit B. I wanted to show off the drag, which was wide open. But it's whatever. So like I said, here we go. Cover three. Or is it a man? It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? That Y route's going to get out. Ugh. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. It's pretty much just going to be the Y route anyway. He just gets outside of everything. If As long as I pass and bullet lead like I, like I want to. That was a tight coverage. I threw too early. So it's all about the throw. I mean, the, the route's really glitchy, but it's really all about the throw a lot of times because, you know, the defense just doesn't cover that far to the sideline a lot of times. Next up out of the gun, empty bunch wide, we have the spacing. So, I mean, you have obvious flat beaters with Y and B. Um, the Y route, I can tell right here, is going to get open right away. You know what I mean? Like, just, because, just from the spacing. That's the name of the play, right? But if it's cover three, I mean, the B route obviously will get open as well. I personally like having a, a slant on a play like this, um, but I don't really, you know, the way that the, the X route is, I'd probably say he'd be the best candidate uh, on a play like this where I know it's going to be probably a cover two. You're pretty much just splitting the field in half and reading from right to left. Not really a lot of great, um, you know, man beater plays on this, so I'm going to let slant's pretty much it. So if I get a man coverage, I'll pretty much just sit on it. Like I said, right here, I mean, we have, you know, if I hold it long enough, one of these guys is going to get open, then he doesn't hang on to it. But you can see he was open on the play. Really good short yardage type of play as well. Like I said, right here, we just got the A route, you know what I'm saying? We're just reading spacing, that's the idea. You know, we're just, where's the spacing between these plays? They can't cover them all. That's typically how it goes. So here we got to cover three, like I said, I'm going to steal that Y route pretty much every time against cover three. The B route beats cover three as well too, but I don't like the way it's positioned. That's something that if I was positioned a little bit closer, like I said, I'll show you. The B route can get open, but it's just not as instant. You can see right there, I gave the guy a chance. So I'm just going to hit the Y route. It's way easier. Cover three, cover four, or whatever. The y, the y route is going to be a really good option. And then, like I said, just reading spacing once again. You know what I mean? Like one of these two guys are so close together, typically a linebacker is caught in between them and can't cover both. So that's really the play. Typically, in the spacing routes, the spacing plays that I use... Um, you know, like I said, going from right to left, you know what I'm saying? One of them's going to be open. One of those four routes, just scanning the field right to left, is going to be open. That play was the slant, and you can see it's a really good play. Next up, we got the spot smash. It's pretty much a series of plays where all I really have to do is, is put the McCaffrey here on a streak, and the Y route's going to get outside of most coverages. As you can see right there, they're so close together, in a man coverage, the, the, the streak route can get in the way. Against most zone coverages... The streak's going to pull coverage back. Like I said, right, we got another man. I mean, he misses on the on the jam, and then he's just, you know, this is just going to be pretty much the setup the entire time. 
Um, you can also put uh, one of these routes on a drag, although I think the best route to do would probably be the B route, just so you can get something. If he gets across the field and gets a cover two, a lot of times that Y route um, can have a little bit of trouble with cover two, can drop back into it, but if the, if the B route pulls it down, then it's problem solved. But uh, this play really, like I said, doesn't really matter what the coverage is. The Y route is typically going to be the uh, the play. And that's pretty much all there is to it. The B route's a pretty good option, but if he's not open, it's pretty much a screen and bust. And you can see, I mean, you can get some good blocking. Obviously, you have half your offensive line running over to help. But it's not necessarily the most consistent play. But like I said, you do have another option. Oof. But like I said, it's not the most consistent play. You do have other options, as you can see right there. I mean, they were sending the house. So on the other side, I'd say you have some pretty good zone options. The screen typically is a zone option also. But like I said, that B route, that's a good route. That's one of the reasons I had to show this play. I'm looking at him first. If he's open, I'm going to take him. But I'm starting this play staring at the B route. And if it's not there, I'm going screen. It's that simple. And you can see if you can use your blockers a little bit better than I did, <laughs> you're going to have a really big play. Next up, we got the Z spot and go. Another play where all I'm really going to do is put the uh, the X route on a streak, and the Y route is going to get outside of most coverages. You can see right there, I don't know if that was a cover three or cover two, but it doesn't matter. He's going to get outside of it. So whether it's a man, zone, doesn't really matter. All out blitz, I got to get it out a little bit quicker than I typically want to do. But, uh, but it's all about that play. It's all about that Y route. Let's go ahead and let's do this one more time. Like I said, it doesn't matter what the coverage is. He's going to get outside of it or get over it or whatever. Like I said, that's just a really glitchy formation, a really glitchy setup. Next up, we got the four verticals. Once again, we're just going to put the, X, the Y on a slant, put the X on a comeback. And that's going to be my man beater. I mean, the Y, the y is a man beater as well. Uh, but that's pretty much where the user will be as he fumbles there. Uh, but those are my best man. My, my man plays are on the left side. My zone plays are on the right side. As you can see, I mean, the RB route will beat cover three quite a bit. And he, he was gone there, but I <laughs> don't know what happened. But um, like I said, my man side's the left. My, my zone side's the right. So right there, I mean, that, uh, actually, that... that um, My man side's on the left side, my zone side's on the right side. That's pretty much the easiest way to remember it. Like I said, there's a man coverage, we've got that, and then we got the comeback route. That's much quicker, but the comeback route's the, the real, like, the check down there. That'd be my next read on that type of play. And then, um, this is actually <laughs> unexpected. I don't know if that was a cover, too, but just the way that that rode out. That jam rode out, I just kind of saw him come free over the top. But, um, but like I said, here's another man. We'll get that comeback route. We'll have that Y route again and again and again. Crossing routes over the middle confuse the user, or at least, um, you know, it's hard for the user to cover all that. And like I said, this is that cover three play right there. So he gets around the jam. Next up, we got the verticals. Here I'm going to put X on a drag, motion out this receiver, and that's it. That's all i got to do. The B route will get open underneath coverages a lot of times, really quick and easy. Your drag is going to be the check down. It'll come open in this area after all the, after all the, um, the zones are vacated. And then you can see if you have a cover one man or cover zero, you can have a big play up the sideline to the, uh, the wheel route. That's going to be your best man beater as well as the uh, the drag. So here we go. I can tell I'm going to have RB. Like I said, there's too much there for, for you know, those two routes are too close together for the, the defender to choose. So whichever defender that the the, the, um, the user defender chooses, you pretty much hit the other one inside. One of those should be open pretty much every time. So like I said, right here, just waiting for him to clear. Then you have a real easy shot over the middle. Next up, we got the bench pivot. So this play right here, I mean, I don't really have to make any adjustments. I like the X route. That's going to be my first read. 
Uh, it's just a unique looking uh, reed structure with um, with it's basically just a cover two concept, but you can tell it looks a little bit different. You can put the um, the RB route on a streak, and it'll help pull those coverages. But ultimately, I'm just going, you know, like I said, it's cover two play. You know, what I mean, you got your you got Olsen, who's your who's your deep cover two play, and then you got your out route, which is your cover three play. Next up, we got the PA bunch shot. Let's go ahead and let's pick that. Um, it's gonna be a good cover four beater. So this play right here, you don't need any adjustments um, if you're trying to beat cover four. Like I said, I'm just going to motion out because it's just a little bit easier for me to get away from the pressure. And you can see it's just a really good over-the-top uh, touchdown play against cover four. Here we go. Here we go. You could also motion him in and against cover threes and stuff like that. Uh, I'll take away the play action, but a lot of times he can get open like right over the middle, um, you know, pretty quickly. Ready. You can also motion him in if it's a cover three or you know a lot of zone coverages. Um, you know he'll get open really quickly over the middle, and then you got your B route here crossing deep, which is a nice play. So really, you know you can run that more casually against typical zones, uh, but if you want to hit a home run against cover four, um, obviously you have that option too. As you can see, it's just it's just all timing. You just have to wait till he gets inside of that receiver and and even with the other safety. Go ahead and watch the replay. You said you're just kind of waiting for a certain launch point to make that make that throw. Once he gets inside that safety, and once he's even with that other safety, but you see he's even past it. So once he gets, you know, once he's inside that safety and and, and, and either even or slightly past this safety, you can see I'm probably already making my throw. Yeah, I'm already in my throwing animation. So it's just a, it's all about timing. It's all about passing away, and and uh, you know. Just don't be too far behind the line of scrimmage, or else your quarterback might not have the arm. Next up, we got the wide trail. You motion over Olsen, put him on a streak, then I block the running back, um, and then put RB on a smart route. And this can be a one-play touchdown against cover three. You just have to find the uh, find the time behind the uh, the line, and you can see how that'll get get across for uh, for a big play. So streak Olsen, move him across, RB on a smart route, just to shorten the route. Because ultimately, I'm just trying to get, um, you know, I'm trying to get time here. And then you can see there, pressure made me throw it a little bit earlier uh, than I wanted to. That's the only thing you got to worry about here. I like to uh, try to roll. If I, if I slide my protection to the right, because I like to try to roll in the direction of where I'm throwing the ball. Just shortens the throw. And obviously, it uh, just makes it a little bit easier. So, you know, that's pretty much how I would handle that. So, pretty good play. Next up, we have the Z spot. This play right here, I mean, I mean I'm just going to put the B route on a streak. Uh, I'm really just trying to, um, you know, play the, the RB route and the A route off one another. Like I said, if it's a cover two right there, obviously that streak is really helping to pull coverage open. Against cover twos, you're just kind of watching the A and the B. One of them should be open pretty much every time. This looks like a man coverage maybe? No, I'm not really sure. He got, he got jammed really good, but you can see he still got out of it. But a lot of these these concepts are really just playing the, the the deep route, like the A the A and the deep route off one another. As you can see, I'm just getting a lot of like they're really trying to take away the the, the, the flat beater for some reason. A lot of times the flat route, you're just watching that first, and if he gets open, you're taking it there. You didn't really really didn't get open, and then that streak really helped to bump Hogan outside and get him and get him off the defender. That's kind of the point of the streak and the the tight formation, like a bunch. As you can see right here, I mean we're just gonna zoom in on that you can see how he he goes to break outside and this guy chips him off you see how he just gets in the way so that's that's the purpose of the streak next up we got the weak flood you, you don't have to smart route him i'll go ahead and i'll leave him without the smart route just to show you what i'm talking about um but you know you really just want to pass it just doesn't get as open as the smart route version does but you can see it gets passed the rollout isn't necessary, but I typically like the rollout just because I know that's where I'm throwing the ball. Shortens the uh, the throw my way, and then you can see, like I said, it's, he gets passed, but it's not as good as the smart route. So like I said, smart route, better way to go. I'm gonna roll out. The running back right in front of me is a good check down, and then, like I said, he's getting past it just a little bit more than he would otherwise. Next up, we got the PA wide receiver in. 
It's a pretty good play just like this. Um, you know, the A route was open right off the bat there, but I'm going for a bigger look, which is, you know, against cover two, the B route's going to be um, open between the safeties typically. And it's like I said, no real, no real adjustments needed. Um, the X route is going to probably be a, the best check down. You can see he comes across. Typically, your user will be following one of the other routes by the time he comes across. Um, so he's going to be a really good look. This here looks like a man coverage, so my A route is going to be one of my better options. Um, but typically, like I said, that's going to be, you know, you're really just reading it, it, the, the, the drag first, the, the B route second. The RB route never really comes into play. It's kind of like a, you know, the way that that, that, um, the way that, that sets up. And then you can see, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much going for the B route or the X route. Not really taking, all these other routes are pretty much just to pull coverage essentially the idea I mean I have you know Hogan is okay outside of certain coverages but it's just I don't find that that's the most consistent so I'm typically looking for I want to take away his play action too I don't really like that play action but I typically find um, that you know like he would typically would be a good man beater but he's not so it's like it's not really worth it for that you could also streak Olsen and that can help to get um, to get him open against you know to, to pull coverage uh, typically for the uh, for the for the crossing route there. So like I said, cancel the play action. So ultimately, I'd say the A and the X route are man beaters, and uh, the B routes cover two. You can see right there, it looks like a cover two. So you know we got the B route. The 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 post or the uh, the wheel route can still get outside of cover threes. Um, we'll see if we can get that look here. Like I said, he still gets outside of that. Um, so, you know, that's your cover three. Your, 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 your double post, what do you call that? The B route there is, is cover two, and then your, your man beaters are more and Olsen. Next up, we got the flanker dig. This is just a good, you know, route to the running back. It's really all this plays about. Just getting it out to the flat, catching and running with your, probably your best weapon, which is the RB. So that's pretty much it. Like I said, I'm not really, you know, there's, there's no real other... Other, I mean, the best. There are other options. I shouldn't say there aren't other options. There are other options, but they're all just pretty basic. I mean, if, if they follow that running back hitting the square route over the top, is probably the best option. Like I said, that's all I really want to do is I just want to get it out to my flat, steal a couple yards. That's it. Next up, we got the double ends. If you motion out this receiver here, it's a one play against uh, cover four. Just gonna wait for that X route to cross, and you can see how he gets uh, he gets past it pretty far. If I roll in the direction, it'll be an even bigger opening. I rolled in the opposite direction of the pass. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good play like this too. I mean, against you know a normal normal setup, um, you just have good routes crossing over the middle. Be a cover th it could be a one play against cover three as well if I motion out Samuel, put him on a comeback, and then smart route uh, more. Now, I mean, the RB route will get open instantly against cover three, but if I want the touchdown, I just got to wait till he rolls across. And now I got to basically, basically one play touchdown against, you know, two different coverages. It could be a big play against cover two if I motion out more, put him on a fade, and then a lot of times he can get outside of cover twos just as is. You can see I almost got past there. I mean really really easy play against cover two as well. But obviously I mean, they're gonna ma you're gonna do the motion pretty much every time. And then this is just you know it's really all just timing and throws after that. But um you can race past the sideline if I can get the touchdown. So yeah basically you can one play every every defense every every basic defense with this play right here. Just uh you know Pretty much however you want to do it. So cover two, you can get a touchdown. Cover three, cover four. You name it. There, I throw it a little bit early, but you know he just gets uh, he just gets past the corner at some point with that streak. Next up, we got the fullback inside. It's just going to be a quick inside you know inside run. Um, you already have a running back in the fullback spot. That's how the formation's designed. So. You don't have to worry about that, um, but it's obviously going to be just a good inside run. It's not going to be nothing spectacular, but there can be some big runs out of it. 
This formation is mostly about the pass play, so it's definitely good to mix in right here. I mean, they're 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 sending a double safety blitz, and I just break it outside for a big run. So obviously, like you know, sometimes you got to take it outside. Just gonna read this run inside out. I'm gonna try to take it inside if I can, but you can see there's a pretty good angle to take it outside. Next up, we got the halfback slip screen. I'm gonna motion this guy over here. And that's going to be my first read is going to be the RB route. Like the screen is the second the second option. Your, your user probably will follow that, so I'm just going to hit the running back nine times out of ten. But if that's covered, if the user starts covering that, then the screen's typically going to be open. Uh, the screen plays aren't, like, they're not great, and you can take a huge loss. But if the user's covering the other side, then I'd rather take a big loss than an interception. And the computer typically won't intercept the screen play. As you can see over here, I mean, this can this has the potential to be a really big play. I, I'd probably rather have my better running back on that side. As you can see, it's, a, it's got really big catch and run capabilities, and a lot of times it really can be forgotten. So right here, I mean, obviously it's not. So you know, like we'll take the we'll take the screen play. Like I said, the blocking's not that great, but it's better than than getting picked off. Next up, we got the PAF slide. This play right here is probably best against cover one because of how it crosses over the, over the defenders. But you can see, like the, the, the they're gonna all these routes are gonna pull coverage down for these outside routes. So you're really gonna have a lot of spacing for the deeper routes just because of all these crossing routes are gonna pull the zones down and leave these guys to the safeties. So like I said, these underneath guys, I mean, this guy will be a really good play for under cover threes for a good catch and run. So. If they drop, if the zones drop back, you take the underneath guys. If they drop to the underneath guys, you take the guys that are back. I mean, it's really, you know, a really good play. And then, like, right here, this out route's a really good man beater. That's probably the only man beater on the play. Next up, out of the shotgun split close, we have the power O. It's a really good outside run. The blocking sets up pretty well. It's got to kind of take it wide. Um, and then you'll typically have a pretty decent carry. Typically, it's just a sprint to the edge. Sometimes you have to cut it up in the middle, but mostly you're just trying to bounce it outside as I get lit up there. But I still get about a 10 to 15 yard carry, so that's whatever. Moving on. Next up, we got the Z spot. It's a good cover one beater. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, the X route on a, um, <laughs> on a uh, smart route, put the B route on a streak. That's going to pull the cover one safety. I mean, I have cover one beaters. Like these outs, you know, this is this is a series of also cover two plays on the outside. So I'm going to motion out the uh, X route. I don't have to put them on a smart route, but I can. That's an option. Then I'm going to put uh, B on streak. And that should create a one play TD against man coverage. As you can see right here, I mean, he just basically beats him off the line. I just threw a bad ball. But you can see he's behind. The streak pulls the cover one safety to the one side. The streak's job, other than pulling coverage, from the cover one safety is also going to help out in man and zone plays uh, but let's just go ahead and let's complete this first so we can worry about that in a second here so you can see it's an easy one play t against cover one but the uh the b or the uh the routes on the other side are pretty much your zone beaters as you can see i mean if it's a cover three if the coverage drops back i'll take the running back for a nice little catch and run that's an easy play You'll get um, you'll get the A route open quite a bit. You can smart route him too. Like I said right there, that's a cover too. That's a good play, but you can smart route that route and make it deeper. Ultimately, you're just kind of reading high and low with the RB route and the uh, and Hogan above him. So you know if it's if the underneath route's there, take it because the over top route won't be there. So don't try to force it. Don't try to get take the over the top route if it's. If it's not given to you, it's not given to you. So I say right there, I mean, that's that's a really good play against most other coverages. So you're just reading high and low with those two other routes. Next up, we got the Bucks Shallow. So if you motion this guy over, if it's a cover three especially, he's going to typically get open for a good catch and run up the sideline. There, I just safe caught it. I typically want to run this from a, from a far hash mark. Obviously, this is going to give me the most space for a catch and run. But he's close enough to the line of scrimmage. We don't necessarily have to do that. But you can see, they just leave him open underneath. Pretty much this will be any you know outside coverage like that, like a cover three, maybe even a cover four at times. Uh, but this is pretty much the play, just you know stealing this route to the sideline. So 
so they'll just they just won't cover it you know what i mean they just won't cover it that far out so a good play for uh you know maybe third and five type of situation next up we got the quick slot out let's play here I like the motion over hogan again put him on an out route now we have you know all the play is going to be to this side of the field um, it, that guy, he'll help pull coverage down for this this outside slant here. You can out route him. You can also put him on a uh, flat route. It's it's really your choice. They're going to have similar effects. The flat route, I feel like it'll pull coverage down a little bit quicker uh, for this a route. But it's really much. It's really just a flat route, and then this route here. I would say put the the uh, if you think it's a man coverage, put the X route on a comeback route, or put him on an in route and then smart route him. It's like a late check down coming over the middle. Uh, against zone, uh, but against you know it'll work. He'll work well as, against man and in route too. So I'd say that's the better look. But you have, you know, options. The streak is not really an option. So I'd say do something like this would be the way to go. And like I said, against man, he's not really the best. He's not as good against man as he is against zone. But you can see he still got it. So really, the X route is going to be your best man option. So you know whatever you pick, that's going to be your your decision for man most times. Except right here, if they don't cover wide or off the line, you just take that for a good catch and run, a good 10-yard catch and run. I'll take that all game. So it's a really easy play. This play can be a, a one-play touchdown against cover four drop show two with the exact same setup like this. Um, you just have to wait for the, uh, the B route to cross the middle and then get a good throw. So against cover four, it's going to be an explosive play, and then against every other zone, every other coverage, it's just going to be a pretty, uh, pretty basic uh, two-read play. Next up, we got the smash digs. If it's a cover two, the Y route should be open. If it's a cover three, streak, and that, and then the Y route should be outside. If it's a man coverage, if it's fa if he's fast enough or a good enough receiver, he should get open into man coverage as well. But ultimately, this is another play where I'm really just trying to get it to my running back underneath the zones. Didn't get much of a catch and run there, but uh, that's pretty much the play. It's essentially, you know, I'm going to try to get running back, and if he's not there, I'll try to hit one of the receivers over the top of him, which is the B route typically. So like I said, if I can get it to my running back in the flat, like I said, it's a man coverage. That guy will, will approach late. It'll pretty much be a play no matter what. Like I said, if he's covered, a lot of times the B route behind him is not covered. Next up, we got the Y sale. Just another route to try to get the running back open. That's really all I really care about right here. I'm just trying to get it to my running back. The Zig route's a good man beater, and so is the uh, the route what, that Olsen's running. It's a good man beater route. Um, as you can see, it also gets open in zone there. I want to move the ball back to the center. Let's go ahead and move that back so I can get a little bit on both sides. Get motion out the running back again. And he'll get to the sideline quicker. Say right there. I mean, that was a man coverage, I think. So you can see how that just gives him that huge advantage, a huge head start. Pretty much just like the other play, you're going RB and you're going Y. One of those guys should be open pretty much every time. It's essentially just a flat beater play, and uh, that's it. With your A route being your best route over the top, uh, and your latest developing route would be your X route coming over the middle. Once the users left the middle of the field, a lot of times. You know, he's open. Like right there, he's even double covered and he was still open. So, you know, good late developing route. Next up, we got the bench. This is a good play for cover two, all out blitzes, man. Um, you know, just about any coverage, really. I mean, th these outside routes a lot of times can get outside of cover fours and three. There's no real adjustments needed. I mean, this, these underneath routes get open under cover, two, under cover three really well as well. They beat man also. I mean, it's just this play is just really, really money this year. And like I said, there's a man coverage. Like I said, they're send, sending zero blitzes. I'll pull this play out, and I'll pretty much hit a home run just about every time. The only thing that can really prevent this play from having success is if they don't get a free release. A lot of times that can mess up, uh, mess up the route, and then they don't get that, they don't get that edge the way that they are here. So, next up we got the Bucks corners. But here once again, you can motion out the uh, motion running back to a bunch. I like to put, um, I mean, I can, I can do a number of things with the other guys. If I'm trying to beat cover three, I can streak the outside receivers. If I think the outside, it's a cover two, I could always put Hogan here on a flat. 
Um, this is probably the way I would do it. Now Now I pretty much have a cover three side and a cover two side. Although, this side's going to be covered two as well. And man, like I said, it looked like a man to an extent. The way that that, that the, the, it almost looked like both. I couldn't even tell. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter because this setup, you're going to get, um, you know, an opening pretty much every time to Olsen. Um, the Y route is my is a better, a little bit of a faster receiver. So obviously I'd rather go that route than go to the tight end. As you can see, he'll break outside of uh, the coverage a little bit quicker. But you know you can run. I mean you can run it just like as is too. You don't have to motion run back into the bunch. I find that it can uh, can help a little bit. But you know there that was actually a tight window because you got jammed. But like I said, you can leave McCaffrey back, but these other uh, these other routes are not really negotiable. I mean the, the, the McCaffrey is the only route that, like I said, I don't know if you need him to come to the line or not. He works out either way. Next up out of the shotgun tight, we have the buck drive. This play right here, I mean, it's really just a cover two play. Um, you have your A route here, which is also going to beat cover three. You can see that was a cover three. It just gets open underneath it. Um, other than that, I mean, you have drags for the checkdowns. Other than that, you're just playing the A route um, against the uh, the X route, which is crossing down here. You can see how that just gets open under the coverage and makes a good check down against man or zone. Next up, we got the Z spot smash. Just streak the B route. You can't motion out the receiver, but he'll still get open underneath the coverage for a catch and run from time to time. Also, I like to put the X on a drag. As you can see right here, I mean, he's getting, he's going to get outside of that. It was just a, an all-out blitz. He didn't quite get the acceleration I want, though. I usually get a little bit better up the field. So, flat route, streak. Like I said, I'm pretty much looking for the running back, though. That's pretty much the play. Next up out of the shotgun tight, we got the buck seams. But right here, if it's a cover three, motion this guy out, and I find it gets open under the coverage quite a bit. Even if it's not cover three, I find like it's gonna be a big play. And then this guy over here, I mean, I don't even know what coverage that was, but he just beat it outside. So, I don't know what that was. So, like I said, we can just do that all game, really. Like I said, one more time, we got that Y route. He's just way outside. I mean, the throw was bad, but he's just getting outside no matter what. There we go. The cover three. This should be interesting. Should be pretty much the same result. Like I said, that Y route. Like I said, he's he's beating outside. He got a little beat. He got a little bumped up a little bit out there, though. Regardless of the coverage. So here we go. Cover three. Like I said, I'll motion this guy out. Try to get that Y route going. Although it might not be a cover three. It might be a man. So here we go. We're going to go the other way. With a really easy touchdown, because like I said, that's going to beat man up the field as well. So I'm going to motion that guy out again. Like I said, it looks like we got that B route over there. I think that was a cover too. So you don't even have to motion him over. I'm going to go ahead and check the replay on that. I said, yeah, that's definitely, definitely a cover too. That's why I sat on it. So, like I said, you don't really have to worry about who you motion. Pretty much doesn't change the results. So, like I said, right side, right here, it gets behind it again. This play is a total glitch. So, go ahead and do that again. So, it's pretty obvious if it's cover two, where we're going. And there, that was a cover three, and it just, it just got passed. I mean, it's just, if it's man coverage, you really want to motion this side out. Because the Y route's going to beat the man coverage better. Or best. I said, like you see right there. I mean, he's beating that man coverage. He didn't catch it. <laughs> he didn't catch it for some reason, but if it's man, that's who you want. If it's covered two, you want to motion out the B route. And I don't think it ultimately matters, to be honest with you. Like I say, he's going to get past that. The guys aren't catching the damn ball for some reason, but they're getting past. All speed, no hands. So, so like I said, here we go once again. Cover two. I say, he's going to beat that outside. Caught it that time. Nice second back catch. You can go up the sideline with that too against cover two. And even the A route inside has a shot. And it <laughs> Next up, we got the PA Bucks cross. It's another good cover two play. Um, the B route here, um, you know, comes open under cover two. Your check down would be Y. 
And I'm not really, really getting cover two or man. Just getting a lot of cover threes. I so said, here we go. We're going to go ahead and we'll just. Like I said, that beats cover three as well, as you can see. If I motion them out. So, motion out that route, beat cover three or man. And then the B route will beat cover two, which once again, I don't have a cover two here. That was a cover three, which, you know, I guess you can still get open underneath it if you make a good timing throw. But ultimately, it's going to be a cover two play. Cover two to the one side, cover three to the right side. Next up out of the shotgun tray, we got the PA post shot. This play right here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put A on a streak, Y on a drag, and uh, I'm going to put the X route on an in route and then smart route. That's going to be my check down. Uh, but pretty much this play here, I'm just trying to create one play TDs against zone coverages. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't have to be a touchdown. Right there is just a big play. The X route being on the in route like that, is there to come open after the user leaves the center of the field. If he follows the, the in route, he'll be a good check down. Next up, we got the level sale. This play doesn't work as good as it did last year, but it's still pretty much a read to the running back. It's running back tight end. Um, as you can see, I'm getting a big play, but it's definitely, ooh, I think it's fumbled. It's definitely a really good play, though, down the field. Um, you got a, a series of check downs on the other side, and like I said, you're pretty much just going tight end, running back. Did I get back-to-back -back fumbles? What kind of bull crap is that? But uh, that's pretty much the play. And like I said, obviously all these check downs on the right side. One of these, one of these guys will be open. <laughs> one of these guys will be open pretty much every time on the other side. You don't really have a man beater that's too great, so you could always put one in a comeback route. Um, the furthest one out on a comeback route, so you have a, a reliable man beater. Uh, than just your tight end. Your tight end would probably be your best man beater at this point. Next up, we got the fade smash. If it's a cover two, the uh, the Y route's still going to be very good. As you can see right here, I mean, it just gets outside the coverage. Um, but ultimately, I'd say it's pretty much just a cover two play at this point. So like I said, it's pretty much just a cover two play. Here it looks like we have, uh, I'll take the, come, the check down, the comeback route there. Next up, we got the Bucks slot out. It's going to be a, a man, a man play. Pretty much, you know, you have your you have your check down, which is going to be RB against man. But if you want to try to hit the home run, this out and up has proven to do that time and time again. As long as you get a good throw, that was actually not the best throw. Should have been out a little bit further. But you can see how how this route. I mean, you can smart route it too to get open a little bit quicker. You can pass block the running back also if you need the uh, you need the time. He's not really getting this this ball out there. Though. I mean, I have to come back for it a little bit, but you can see. I mean, it's pretty much the play. You could also drag like the A route. You could drag the A route, put him on a slant. You know, it doesn't really matter because ultimately the um, the B route is really where the uh, it's going to pull the safety to the side. So you don't really need that other streak. Next up, we got the Bucks. Next up, we get the close Bucks cross. I'd say put the RB route on a drag, block the running back, and this is pretty much. You know, I'm not even. You know, for man coverage, as you can see, really, really crosses over. Typically, these routes don't really be man coverage anymore, but they, this particular one does. I'd say put B on a drag, and then pass block the running back. This is just to kind of pull coverage against zones because these routes were really beat man just fine. But you see it there, I'm going to get a horrible throw off my back foot. Still made it happen. If I could have bulleted that and stepped into it, it would have been a way better play. You can run it as is, but the running back's got to be blocking. That's pretty much it. So I think the B route makes the most sense. As you can see, these crossing routes, they really just bump their coverage off. I don't even think it's the route necessarily. Do this one more time. So these guys, I mean, these routes, they run so close to one another. You can see, like, eventually they just, they just get open. They clear. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.